we have this pretty interesting article courtesy of Business Insider with the CEO of Shopify who said some things that I kind of resonate with, especially coming from a startup background and working in companies, large and small, and corporations. I've worked in places where there's five people, a place where I'm the 20th hire, a place where I'm a team, where I'm in a building full of, you know, of 500 people and a team of 100 people where I'm very insignificant. I've worked in all types of places, right? Big, small, retail, bars, all the, all the malarkey in between. So I've got a good handle on kind of, you know, what some of the most annoying things are in the whole startup land. And one of the one of the more annoying things working within startups is this idea that they have where you're all some sort of family, right? Where you're not just working a job or you're not kind of, you know, what um, the CEO of Spotify said here, or sorry, the CEO of Shopify said here, where it's more so of a sports team that he kind of wants to imbue in his company. But most companies want you, in order to be committed, committed to what they do and to go the extra mile they kind of put this idea out there this notion that you're somehow some kind of family when you're obviously not you're there primarily because you want to exchange your time for money but secondly of course if you can find a place that aligns with your you know um with your ambitions with your goals in life maybe your interest that's also a bonus but on top of but the main deciding factor is this idea that you're willing to exchange your time for money but then the most effective way to kind of empower, I think, your employees to get them to do the extra mile is to treat them more like a sports team as opposed to this idea that they're a family. Because with a sports team, it's not like you are, you know, you're in love with the team you play for. You're a professional, so you obviously you do your best job. But you want to be, you want to do your best job so that you can be the best teammate for the people that you're in a team with. Do you understand? So you kind of want to put your best foot forward because you know if I do my bit, that's going to make the next person next to me job easier which is going to make that person next job easier it's kind of like a domino effect that's kind of how you want to rally the troops as opposed to a family like there's a you know a family which you don't have any you know which you don't have any option to be born into you kind of have to love unconditionally that is not what you happens in a company at all and there's some weird rules that they have in startups so they always do that every anytime you go to a startup and they have a oddly two stocked kitchen you know, with all the best snacks in the world, they have an amazing game room, they have all the best sort of like, um, you know, end of week parties and quarterly meetings, you have to really, really be cautious, because usually, if they're spending too much time getting all those extracurricular, extracurricular stuff right, it's usually some, and it's usually kind of a way to mask over some of the day-to-day -day hassles that you're going to have working in a place like that, whether it comes to them not paying you on time, whether it comes to your role being a little bit vague and not, not having set K or KPIs keep moving and, you know, the, the bar of entry keeps going up and down. Like, there are some definitely red flags out there if you start in a startup and there's too many snacks and snooker tables and, you know, people around playing happy sack in the flipping patio and stuff. It's always a red flag in my experience. So it's really great to hear the Shopify CEO say the following, courtesy of Business Insider. He said, read the essay Shopify, Shopify CEO sent to managers to remind them they're a sports team, not a family. It shows a growing tension between leaders and employees in a corporate world. It says over the past year or so, a debate over the role of that company should play in its employees' lives has played out in the corporate world. While some workers have high expectations for how their employers should be engaging when it comes to social issues, companies are uh, sorting through how to best respond while staying focus on their business which is the main thing all the social justice stuff you can do in your own time right but the main thing is for you to contribute to the bottom line of this company to make sure the lights are on so that you can get paid right and of course if it aligns with your passions and your goals in life cool but this whole imbuing politics and you know treating it like a family and extension of your home it's not the thing you go you do your job you be professional and you go home and you do it again and again and again and again you turn up you turn up you turn up you turn up but not because they're your family because they're your sports team continues this has been heightened by the COVID-19 pandemic which has been which for many has blurred the line between work and life in general a group of more than 400 Google employees announced that they had formed a union that would focus on ethical issues and create a structure for work activism um, in September Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong wrote a letter that said the company would not engage in societal issues great unrelated to our core mission because we believe the impact only comes with focus 100% singular focus and singular drive especially in the company is one of the most satisfying things to see when you start at a place and you see the founder has his head screwed on and has a great management team 
and everyone you're working with and your little team as well knows what they're doing and they're driven and know what to do. It's so unique. It doesn't happen a lot because sometimes there's a lot of losers and, you know, kind of, you know, crappy players that are in your team together with you. But sometimes you can join a company where everyone is just such a killer. It makes working so much easier and it makes you achieving your goals and your targets that much more sweeter. It really, really does. And then that way, if your manager then goes, hey, here's my card, go to the bar in the corner and have a couple of rounds on me. That pint is so much more sweeter than your manager inviting you to go to Miami and stuff and all this glitzy stuff. Like that glitzy stuff usually is a mask for crappy practices day to day but sometimes just having the ability to order a pizza after hitting your target on a friday is much sweeter than go doing these extravagant uh you know um uh things where you go you know on these flipping hikes and stuff it's just un unnecessary in my opinion super super unnecessary uh la, la, la. Focus. Coinbase offered severance packages to employees who did not agree and 60 people took the company up on it. The software company Basecamp initiated a ban on political discussions in April, which led to the bar of at least 18 employees. Imagine leaving a company because they don't want you to, they don't allow politics to be discussed on Slack. Imagine how pathetic that is. Like, what? In August, Shopify CEO Toby looked, um, sent an email to managers uh, outlining the e-commerce company's stance on leadership and social justice issues just a few weeks earlier. An internal debate had erupted over the discovery of a noose emoji on the Ottawa company's Slack system. Oh, the things people get annoyed by at work is just annoying, which some employees have disturbed them. Some employees said that they're also upset about a video that a team at Shopify created called the 10 Slack Commandments, a riff on Notorious B.I.G.'s 10 Crack Commandments. At the time, protests over 25th, May 25th killing of George Floyd were taking place. So what? So they somehow tried to link the fact that they made a parody of the 10 sack commandments biggie to the killing of an unarmed, unarmed black man at the hands of police isn't that actually more racist the fact that you can somehow link the fact that they said 10 sack commandments with the biggie song i don't know super 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 pathetic in the wake of the initial debate Looks at open SM or Luke changes the settings on the Shopify diversity focused Slack channel called Belonging to be read only, further upsetting some employees who told Insider they felt silenced. Look at August's email to Shopify managers clarify the stance. So let's actually read his man his email, right? The CEO says the following Leadership is tough. Leadership through times of crisis and ambiguity is doubly tough. Leadership through times of multiple compounding global tidal waves can be impossible. To refer back to my summit talk, Shopify is a is in a new box that we don't understand yet. The world is in a new box that we barely understand yet. Um, we've uh, we've only mapped out a small corner of this box and we've just started exploring the rest of the vast dark patches. It will take some time. What's more, our team members need us more than ever. The best thing that we can do for them is not to add to the ambiguity. Shopify hasn't historically been great at setting clear expectations across the organization. And I think this is starting to cause some enormous amount of managerial depth that's ballooning out of control. I like that, right? An acknowledgement that, hey, maybe I haven't set the parameters straight here, but I'm going to set them straight now. So no more ambiguity, no more hazy ideas of what we're doing. This is what the deal is. Laying the law down. Like, I love when it's like proper authoritative direct sort of managers and CEOs and companies to sort of say how it is and let you know where you stand as opposed to the wishy-washy everything's okay I'm going to walk around the office barefoot thing I much prefer this approach it continues I can tell you that to do that in our various departments I, can, I can't tell you to do this in your various departments but a good start would be to remind everyone that we are a business more importantly we are a hugely ambitious one we are trying to create a world-class product that gives uh let me get some text is coming up on my screen sorry move away um we're trying to create a world-class product that gives superpowers to merchants and we are obsessed over everything shopify does is to, uh, does is to accomplish this and everyone at shopify should be able to describe how their job through a series of direct or indirect steps furthers this mission to help make this more clear to our team members here are some pointers about what shopify is not shopify like any other prof not uh, a Shopify, like any other for-profit company, sorry, is not a family. The very idea is preposterous. We are born into a family. You never choose it. They can't really unfamily you. But it should be massively obvious that Shopify is not a family. But I see people, even leaders, casually use the terms like Shoppy Fam, Ugh, yuck, which calls the members of our team, especially junior ones that have never worked anywhere else, to get the wrong impression. The dangers of family thinking are that um, are that it becomes incredibly hard to 
let poor performances go. Very good point. Shopify is a team, not a family. So if you're not performing in this team, then you will get told to skedazzle because obviously if you're a family, it's basically impossible to fire your family. You've all watched Gordon Ramsay's Kitchen Nightmares. You know how bad that can get. It continues. We literally only want the best people in the world. The reason why you joined Shopify because I hope all the other people you met during the interview process were really smart, caring and committed. This is magic and it creates a virtuous magnetism on talented people because very few people in the world have this in themselves. People who don't should not be part of this team. This magic and this magnetism is a product of the tight performance management that I expect all of us to get to back to. Shopify is also not the government. We cannot solve every societal problem here. Thank God. We are part of an ecosystem of economies, of culture, and of and and uh, and of actual countries. We also can't take care of all uh, all your needs. We will try our best to take care of the ones that ensure you, ensure you can support our mission. Shopify's worldview is well documented. We believe in liberal values and equality for opportunity. Sometimes we see opportunities to help nudge these causes forward. We do this because this directly helps our business and our merchants, and not because of some moralistic overreach. You hear that? We do these things because it helps the bottom line not because we're great people we're a sports team get that in your head we we want to build one of the best companies in the world we obsess uh, about our merchants we want everyone to have a shot at bettering their lot through entrepreneurship we want to make and keep shopify the product world class or die trying how can you read this and not be infused about working at shopify this is a great rallying call right that's the kind of thing that you would say you know on a tannoy somewhere and everyone would be like who 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 right that's what you basically say it continues um only way to do this is through um having different incredible people some of them we hire on future potential and we help them but they expect them to grow into their potential some of them we bring in we bring in further down their careers but we all have to requalify our jobs every year the red queen oh really they have to requalify for our jobs every year the red queen race of shopify's historic 40 percent or better growth is that everyone has to show up at least 40 percent better every year to qualify for our current job that's impressive, isn't it? You don't just get a job for life after you pass your probation. You have to keep justifying your position by good performance, as a sports team does. Um, I expect you to hold yourself and your teams to be to the standard. Judge this improvement based on having a growth mindset, deepening the craft, taking risks, making better decisions, and doing what it takes to better support our mission and our merchants. We will always have the compassion for our team members in truly difficult positions. For example, those who find themselves suddenly becoming primary caregivers or those who are struggling with mental health issues. There are also second chances, especially for those who have been top performers before. Outside of those cases, we need to remind everyone that like any other competitive sports team it matters how you show up every day and contribute to his team success beyond straight performance output everyone that engages in endless slack trolling victimhood thinking and us v them decisiveness and zero-sum thinking must be seen as a threat as they as a threat they are and they break teams teams survive and thrive on the action of the collective and the cohesiveness of the whole poor performance and decisiveness cannot be tolerated i love this um if this is sounds all so surprising this is because we somewhat lost something shopify has always been like this i feel like a lot of these uh, core beliefs have been muddied over the recent years so in my capacity as a one person who has witnessed every minute of shopify's existence i want to reiterate some of these core principles shopify as successful as it is right now precisely because of the downstream effects of these early ideas currently we are successful despite the muddying this will not work for much longer let's get back there despite all of the external buzz around shopify market cap biggest company in canada we still really we're still really early um we are in the big leagues amongst the biggest and baddest companies in the world when we succeed in our mission millions of merchants do better millions of people find employment we have the opportunity to make that tens and even hundreds of millions of in the future i'm here for, for i'm here for this potential and i need you to be here for that too okay that's a lot to take in you might be tempted to take what's out there and run with it in some kind of low pass filter and translate into your own language before that section with your peers and your leads don't above is what i need everyone to understand it's important not to muddy a message that fights against the muddying of principles you're responsible for reinforcing these lessons and holding your teams accountable to them the talent team will follow up in the next steps in the coming days even better actively help them with ideas and opportunities to implement those ideas this is what leadership in action looks like that is incredible <laughs> shopify ceo well done mate top man top top man 
That's what you want to hear from a company. A rousing, a rousing rallying call for you to perform and do your best.